ladies first. Oh, gee, thanks. Okay, are you ready for me to shoot? Yes, ma'am, you have a total no. of three minutes. <laughs> Don't use that word. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is a public meeting, too, isn't it? Did everyone get my brochure from Janet? I'm Brenda O'Brock. I'm from Shreveport. Um, I want to thank Representative Carmody for this House Bill 71. Um, I have some notes here, but I want to deviate a little bit. Can we just grow up on this issue? I don't care if we have white supremacy in stone, the word slavery. Can we just grow up over this? Can we? I think students should be paraded to these monuments. There were hateful people back then. Our students need to be strong. You don't hide things in a corner, in a scourge of darkness, unless you're ashamed of it. I'm ashamed of anyone who thinks like that. If you've ever heard stories from people like the man to my right, Major Ron Chatelaine, on the battlefield, and I don't care if they are Confederate soldiers, Vietnam soldiers, soldiers of Desert Storm, their blood is red, and we need to know about it. Now I'll try to follow some of my notes. All veterans' lives matter. Those who served today in the military and the police, and those who served 150 years ago. If you've, um, who are here who aspires to live in an open and free society? It is un American for anyone or any board to decide who or how our citizens will commemorate our veterans for the last 60 years. You realize you take these monument down, these monuments down, you're you're going to decide for the people what they will commemorate. I have family members who died in the Civil War. I'm going to mention some battles that they were in. The Battle of New Orleans in 1862, Gaines Mill, Virginia in 1862, the Battle of Chickamauga in Georgia in 1863. Thomas Burns, he's my family member. I, me, I'm a united daughter of the Confederacy. He was age 30 when he died on the battlefield. William Gideon Morris, age 26. Eamon Perry Morris, age 37. Christopher Columbus Morris, age 21. He discovered a bullet on his birthday on the battlefield. You can laugh because you know what? Anybody in our family has a great sense of humor. And we honor up. our veterans. You need to wrap up. Thank you. Oh, excuse me, Miss Pat. Coming to you. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure. What's your name again, ma'am? Brenda O'Brock. I'm I'm with Louisiana Power Coalition, which is a statewide organization. I live in Caddo Parish. And Miss O'Brock, um, um, I want no disrespect here, <laughs> but the issue of growing up. At 71, I'm grown up. Good. I've grown up in a cloud of racism. I have family members that fought in the World War II. And my daughter recently, not recently, but is a Air Force veteran who had to endure many different kinds of things as an Air Force veteran. But while you say grow up, I really don't see many people who look like you sitting out here who take the task, to take to task those white supremacists who take on us under the guise of racism. I don't see many of you sitting out there who look like you, who take the task of Jeff Sessions who says slavery was an era in our country. So I'm saying that you say grow up, but there's so many other people that haven't grown up and we have to endure what they give us to endure and to defend who we are. So growing up and having to see how history has changed. And when you talk about going backwards, Colonel Manis, we have gone back backwards. We've gone backwards in this country because today 
Too many people can't walk down the street without being called ugly names. Without being called things that were called, they were called in the 40s and the 50s when I was growing up. So I understand where you're coming from, but you're going to have to not do it on one side. You're going to have to also stand up for what's right for everybody. And you're going to have to take the task, those individuals who don't stand up for what you might believe in. So I'm making a statement and not asking a question. But if you want to respond, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Are you talking to me? I, yes. I would also like to respond. Yes, I would like to respond. Uh, yes, you need to get over it. You need to get over it because hey, I let, let me let me let you all know the rules. I didn't disrespect you now. Okay. Let, 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 no, let's, and I'm, hold I'm up, just, hold <laughs> up. I got this. I got this mic, and I can cut yours off. I don't want to do that. We're going to be respectful, okay? Miss Pat had a right to make a statement. If you want to answer her in a respective way, I'll let you. But we're not getting into a debate. We're going to be respective of each other all day long. We have a lot of people to talk. So if you want to answer her respectful and not in a debate manner, you're welcome to do that. All right. Thank you. Uh, yes, Representative Smith, um, I understand your sentiment. And just like I know that there are hateful people out there. There were then, there are now. I'm sorry that you were disenfranchised. Um, I saw, I'm sorry that I can't do anything about that except come here today and try to bring solution and let you know that I've been through things too. And I could tell you stories in my own family it had nothing to do with skin color, but ways that my family have been disenfranchised. And that's why I say get over it because I've gotten over it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I'm going to call on Representative Carmody to come close on the bill. Mr. Chairman, committee members, and everybody that's here, thank you all for taking the time. This is really what the process is about. It's a democratic process. And as you can see, the bill is in posture that it puts it back into the people's hands. Someone had asked me, they said, Thomas, what is your objective? And bringing this bill forward. My objective is to stop the hate. These are military monuments, friends. If what your perception is that somehow or another that brings hate into your community, put it on the ballot. Let the people decide that. Let them stop the hate by their own actions. If it passes, that is the will of the people. That is what this country was founded on, my friends. That is why all of us are here representing people. We're trying to be the voices for our constituents. This has been a very good meeting this morning. I commend the chairman. I commend all of you for your patience. I commend the speakers for trying to be restrained in what they had to say. They were all very eloquent. But I think that this is a good bill. I would ask the committee members consideration of passing this bill forward and assisting in stopping the hate. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Representative Carmody. Representative Marcel. Thank you. So I'm back in, right? You, you got it. <laughs> you got it. Uh, first of all, let, let me just say that um, I have a lot of relatives and was married to veterans um, in the past. So I have a lot of respect for veterans. Uh, to me, this bill has nothing to do with uh, protecting veterans. <laughs> Uh, I believe that there is a process in place, as I was on the city council prior to here myself, um, that's already in place, and in, particularly in New Orleans, the Home Rule Charter. Um, I have a problem with us usurping the authority of the local government, and I've said it not on this bill, on many others. Uh, I think that this is a way to go around uh, the local authorities to get what you want when you don't get what you want from the local authorities. Um, I believe that that is a sl slippery slope that we slide, but not only that, I believe that if this bill were to pass and I want, uh, my colleagues to listen closely, if this bill passed, I do believe that the city of New Orleans would file a challenge in court and they would win. So the question is, 
Are we just passing something as a feel-good legislation and we know that we already don't have any money and we're going to have to pay for the litigation? Because I'll say again, the city of New Orleans will file a challenge if we pass this bill and they will win. So if you put your name on this legislation, just understand that you're, you're signing on for us to pay for litigation for this particular matter and that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, a couple of other things um, that I want to say. Statues are used to pay tribute and honor to those um, who we feel, everybody feels, have done a great job. Uh, for us to sit here and say that for people to get over it is an insult to the African-American community. So if we're going to say, let's get over it, let's get over slavery, then somebody could say, let's get over the fact that you want these monuments up there. And that's not what we're saying. We're saying follow the process that's already in place. For someone to have not walked in my shoes cannot tell me when to get over something. And so when I see African Americans still facing the type of things that we're facing now, it's difficult for me to sit here and breathe while somebody tell me to get over it. And that will be my final comments. And that's why I cannot support this uh, measure. And not only that, uh, there is a process with the Historical Preservation Committee that I would suggest you follow. And the statues are not being destroyed as many of people want to have this out here. They are being moved to a place where people can still see them for the lady with the Louisiana history. Uh, they can be placed somewhere where it's a better setting for them. Thank and you, so that's why I'll be voting against this measure. Thank you. For the floor on the bill, Representative Smith. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I was going to speak on two issues and the home rule charter issue has already been spoken to. So I'm going to speak on the issue of what happened in committee. In committee, there was a young a, a lady that came to the table and told us to grow up and get over it. Well, I'm already grown up and I'll never get over it. I think it's very, and, and members of this body were just kind of a thought that I handled it well, but it's, it angered me. It angered me to the point that I thought that my friend Thomas, who I call Didymus, and if you're Catholic, you know that Didymus said, unless I put my finger in his hands, hands and touch the holes in his feet in his side, I won't believe. He should have believed then that this bill was going to cause chaos, which it is doing right now. Not only that, he says that, or he, I don't know if he feels that, but he says that this is a bill that he's bringing because he doesn't believe it's a bill for white supremacy. If you would see the emails that I have received and others that I know in this body have received on what they feel should be done about this bill and why we should pass it because I won't even use the language that they used. But this bill is very much about white supremacy and divisiveness. And it's very much ashamed that we have to sit here and talk about it in this body. And unless you don't realize that we too have a history and that history should be believed but yet it's not honored not even in the history books today because even our present president and those in washington say that slavery was just simply an era and we were immigrants to this country i am angry but i'm not angry to the point that i will say some of the things i'd like to say but I think that it's important for you to realize that this bill needs to be voted down. It has encouraged white supremacists to feel that they can say whatever they want to say to us in text messages and in emails. And you should not want that to happen to us as well. 
It has raised its ugly head. The worm, the ism of racism has been raised because of this issue right now and because of other things happening around in our country. So I ask that you please vote no on this bill because it's the right thing to do to at least make us feel that we too have a history. For the floor in the bill, Representative Gary Carter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, I really don't have much to add, except I think this bill gives us, it shows the importance of diversity. Uh, I'm often told that many of our votes are not to be taken personally, that you know there are partisan votes, there are, there are geographical votes, and people vote a certain way, and it's not to be taken personally, and don't get upset about a particular vote. I'm here to tell you that this one is personal. And you've heard from many members of the Black Caucus to tell you how offensive it is to have a monument like the monument, the Liberty Monument that stood in New Orleans with an inscription that recognized white supremacy. It's offensive to have to grow to live in a city where I raised my children, where my family is, to have monuments for those who fought for my enslavement. I'm telling you, from those who know me, and I think I know every member in this body, and I think I have a great relationship with every member in this body. I'm telling you that this is absolutely offensive to us. When the U.S. troops overthrew Saddam Hussein, one of the images on TV was the people of Iraq tearing down that statue of Saddam. The people in Germany don't have monuments to, 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 not, to the Nazi Germany or to Hitler or any of that. But yet, there are monuments in the city of New Orleans to those who fought for our enslavement, to those who fought for us to be oppressed. I'm telling you, this is personal. And it's not just a matter of we're giving the people a vote. That's not, it. That's not consistent with my, the, my Republican colleagues in this body. You all oppose Obamacare because it imposes requirements on the states. Well, now you're trying to impose additional requirements on the local governments is, is absolutely just not consistent. And think about the language of this. No memorial, including any structure, plaque, statute, or monument. Suppose there's a plaque in a school that has to be moved somehow. You're gonna require a vote of the people to move a statute or a monument, a plaque inside of a school? Think about how poorly written this bill is. It's not consistent with your party's beliefs. It's not well drafted. It has to be, it has to be the racial element of this. We've received the emails, the offensive emails, because they sent it to the entire body. I tell you, members, this is personal, and it is offensive. We've got an opportunity to know each other. This is the value of diversity, for us to be able to talk across party hours, for me to be able to ask you questions about your jurisdiction, you to be able to ask questions about mine, and me to listen to you. Every member has told you this is offensive. Members of the Black Caucus, how offensive this is. And so I ask for your vote. This is personal. Last week I was mad at myself because I got disgusted and angry. I sat through the committee where I had a woman tell Ms. Ms. Smith that she should grow up and get over slavery. Not only was that offensive, the thing that really offended me was that not one single member of that committee stood to Ms. Smith's defense. No one checked that woman. No one told her this is an elder, this is a, this is a well-respected woman of this body. We let that comment go. We had people holding Confederate flags up in front of the Capitol, yelling all kinds of obscenities. Members, this is personal. I ask that you vote against it. I'm sorry, I'm emotional about it, but to have a statue, a monument in my city to the people who, tried to, who enslaved my people, my ancestors, who fought for their continued enslavement, is offensive, members, and it's personal. For the floor on the bill, Representative James.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, um, you know, it's, it's almost embarrassing to, to be standing up here talking about something like this in the year 2017. And, uh, you know, when I won this office, there's an older gentleman that lives in my district. And he said, you should be grateful, not that you won, but be grateful because you enjoy the shade of a tree that you didn't plant. And as I think about that today and I think about that tree and that ground, I'm reminded of the, the blood, sweat, and tears of many people that look like me on the ground next to that tree. And we talk about history, but we are ignoring a very significant part of my history. We're ignoring the part that, number one, we lost the war. The war was a lost war. But the most important piece that we're ignoring is that the war was fought to continue the enslavement of human beings. The enslavement of people that look like many of the people that you're sitting next to. And if that wasn't degrading enough, many of my ancestors were recruited to fight in the war to continue their enslavement. And we forget the part of history when on last week we honored our mothers. We forget the painful part when many of some of your ancestors took those same mothers that we honored last week and ripped them away from their families and then they raped them. And that's what we're seeking to honor with these monuments. Not just the enslavement, but the rape of our mothers. The tearing apart of our families. And I'll tell you, I don't take it lightly that I had an opportunity to serve in this body. And I know that I enjoy the shade of a tree that I didn't plant. And I'm not just talking about folks that fought during the civil rights. I'm talking about those that, that died, that were hung. I'm talking about those that were whipped for learning how to read. And we can't ignore the fact that this is not just disrespectful to, to my history, but it's disrespectful to some of yours. Because the other piece that we're ignoring, when those rapes occurred, many of us became cousins. Many of us became family. So although there are black caucus members that are coming down here, many of your ancestors endured the same type of pain that upsets us today. Many of your ancestors, because your great-great-great-grandfathers took my great-great-great-grandmothers and raped them. And children were born. And they're just as much my family as they are yours. So I'm asking that you honor both sides of our family, some the, the untold part, the unwritten part, the part that we want to ignore. But at the end of the day, slavery was not just something that was degrading to the African American community. It impacted each and every one of us. And it was hard to come down here, just, you know, the laughter. It's not funny. It's not amusing, it's serious. And this, this will be divisive, and it is personal. And I'm going to have to pray and get over it. But it's personal. I've been here six years as a member. I worked here for another six. This is the worst thing that I've ever seen done in this building. The absolute worst. And it is personal. And I'm asking that you not just stand with my ancestors, but remember that in, in many of our families, many of us are linked. Many of us are linked by the same blood because of what happened to my great-great-great-grandmothers at the hands of some men that weren't strong enough to do their own work in their own fields, to pick their own cotton, to clean their own homes. Members, this is a very divisive and ugly issue. I have much respect for Representative Carmony, but it is personal. I might not talk to him today, but maybe tomorrow. But members, I ask that you if he doesn't return into the calendar, I ask that you follow my red light. For the floor in the bill, Representative Marcel. Representative Landry, why do you rise? 
Point of order, how many speakers do we have left with their buttons pushed? After Representative Marcel, one more. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman, members. Um, I was in the committee when this bill was heard and it was absolutely ridiculous. I think they maybe quoted me somewhere to say that it was hard for me to breathe after the lady told us to get over slavery. Unless you have walked in my shoes, please don't ask me to get over something. I think it's a very divisive bill, but even more than that, I believe that it usurps the authority of the locals. And you know, as I read the bill, it started to talk about schools. So you're just not usurping the authority of the city council, but you're also usurping the authority of every school board. If a school board in your area wants to rename a building, you're usurping their authority. This bill is deeper than what it appears. It's not just covering monuments. It's protecting monuments and statues and plaques in our local authorities that we have given our local authorities the right to govern. And now we're saying that even though they're elected, we can govern, be govern better than they are doing. I've gotten the hate emails. I've gotten the nasty calls because of the comments that I made in committee. So it's very disheartening to sit here, to have this conversation today in 2017 that white supremacy should be upheld in monuments or in statues or in plaques. It's disheartening that we are having this conversation. If you all remember when I first came here to ask me to pray, and I was very happy to pray in a building where my grandfather worked on it as a laborer. I thought about him, I thought about his father and what they had to endure. And this is taking many steps backwards. And I would have to agree. On the committee, I was surprised, shocked, and dismayed that no one other than myself stood up when the lady said that we should get over it. And I thought Representative Pat Smith did a wonderful job because I was having a tough time to breathe the same air with her. If we don't promote racism or white supremacy, this is the time for us to stand together to unify and send the signal to the rest of the world that Louisiana is not gonna continue to be always backwards. To continue to do the things that other states are moving forward away from and we're gonna go backwards. I think that this it's the most divisive measure that I've seen in my political career. And I'm asking you all to vote this measure down. Thank you.